Going bald is about your hormones. It's not just about getting old, it's about balancing the hormones and balancing the conversion of testosterone into a very unique thing called DHT. In this video, I'm going to break down what's happening when you're losing your hair and what's truly scientifically, physiologically going on in your body and how you can start taking the right measures to counteract it. And this is gonna go for men and women, but for the most part, male pattern baldness is of course a problem mostly for men. And it's all gonna make sense, why, in just a second. You see, it all has to do with this DHT also known as dihydrotestosterone. Dihydrotestosterone is a metabolite or a derivative or a byproduct of testosterone metabolism. You see, what ends up happening is whenever we have testosterone, we have a high level of androgenic activity. These androgens combine with something known as 5-alpha reductase. You're gonna hear a lot about 5-AR in this video, so listen up. What ends up happening is when this 5-alpha reductase combines with androgens, it creates this metabolite of testosterone known as DHT, dihydrotestosterone. This DHT can cross through the blood-brain barrier and cause a lot of chaos throughout the body. But one of the biggest things that it does, one of the biggest side effects, ends up being how it occupies a hair follicle. You see, our hair follicles have unique receptors in them. And when DHT flows around, it just so happens to fit right into these receptors in the hair follicle. And when they clog one of those receptors, they clog that hair follicle's ability to receive nutrients, to receive minerals, and to ultimately receive the protein that they need to grow a hair. So DHT doesn't cause you to go bald, it essentially starves the hair, which is why your hair first starts out by getting thinner, then eventually falls out and doesn't get reproduced. We don't grow new hair. That's why it just stops when we reach a certain age. And what it is, is the cumulative buildup of this 5-alpha reductase reacting with testosterone causing DHT. We have so many years of DHT that it's clogging the hair follicle. So let's get down to how this works in the body a little bit more and what you can do to prevent it. The first one I wanna talk about is good old fashioned saw palmetto. Okay, I'm preaching to the choir here because a lot of people know what saw palmetto is or they've been told by their doctor at one point or another that they should take saw palmetto to reduce the enlargement of the prostate. You see that dehydrotestosterone, the whole DHT conversion, that all has to do with the testes, the prostate, and even the adrenal glands to a certain extent. So a lot of the same things that are affecting DHT will also affect the prostate. So saw palmetto is going to slow down the production of that 5-alpha reductase. In fact, it actually stops that conversion or at least slows it down. It makes it so that the androgenic properties of testosterone don't react with the 5-alpha reductase, thereby reducing the creation of that DHT. So less DHT means less effect on the hair because you have less floating around. It's really that simple. So saw palmetto isn't the most exciting one because that's one that you could just Google and probably could have found the answer to. But there's another one that's even more intriguing that's starting to get a little bit more popular here in the last couple of years. This one is known as pygium. Now pygium is extracted from the bark of the African plum tree. And pygium acts on DHT in an entirely different way. See what pygium does is it utilizes a very unique fatty acid structure to actually penetrate some of the steroid hormones themselves. We have to remember that steroid hormones like testosterone, estrogen, all that, they are fatty acid bound hormones. They work with cholesterol, okay? So if we have a unique structure of fatty acids and we can stop the conversion to DHT that way, we actually have an even more effective means of stopping dihydrotestosterone from being created in mass amounts. Saw palmetto is great, but it's kind of ambiguous with how it stops that conversion process. With pygium, it's a little bit more direct. That unique fatty acid structure slows down the 5-alpha reductase by working with the hormones. So it's proven to have a big, very powerful effect, even to the point where it's almost as strong as phenosteride, which is a pharmaceutical hair regrowth tool. Okay, now it leads me into the third thing that you can do to start improving your hair quality, but also prevent some baldness. And that's good old fashioned magnesium. Remember how I talked about how DHT blocks minerals and nutrients from getting to the hair follicle? Well, magnesium is one of the ones that the hair follicle needs the most. If we don't have the right minerals, we don't have the right nutrients, the hair can't grow. Now, additionally, magnesium does a couple other really interesting things within the body. For one, it's gonna stop calcium buildup in the hair follicle. That's right, calcium is actually going to slow down your hair growth. And it does this because it clogs the hair follicle. Calcium is very tough, it's very rigid, and it can clog our arteries, but it can also clog our hair follicles. And since magnesium counteracts calcium in the blood supply and just in general, it's going to make it so that the hair can grow a lot easier and not have to deal with the calcified stuff that's crusting up inside your hair follicle. It sounds gross because quite frankly, it kind of is. Now additionally, magnesium is involved in so many different enzymatic functions within the body that it's very important for protein synthesis in the first place. 
And since our hair is almost entirely protein, it would make sense that we need this magnesium for protein synthesis in the first place. But there's one big reason why you should be taking magnesium, and it has to do with its effect on DHT. And for this, I'm gonna reference a nice South Korean study from 2010. In a study that was conducted in South Korea in 2010, researchers took a look at combining magnesium with threonate and then combining it with DHT with certain cultures. Well, they were looking at some different reactions with papilla cells and looking at different skin cells, but one of the byproducts of their study was they found that magnesium and threonate had a big effect on DHT in the first place. You see, it actually repressed the DHT significantly, meaning it made it less effective. Hormones have a certain life to them, and you can make them more powerful, or you can make them less powerful. Well, the magnesium and the threonate made it significantly less powerful, and it was believed because it had to do with the effect on the gene expression of something known as DKK1. All that that means is it changed the genetic structure of the actual DHT, making it less potent, making it smaller, making it weaker, so it didn't affect the hair follicle as much. So we have some pretty interesting stuff proving that magnesium does have an effect when it comes down to hormones. Now, that's not the end all be all, that's just one study, but I'm a huge advocate of magnesium in the first place. So if we can understand our hormones, understand the relationship between minerals in our hormones, and also understand what is happening when it comes down to the conversion of testosterone and dihydrotestosterone, we are five steps ahead of everyone else that's just going through life, letting their hormones do whatever they want to do. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, make sure you hit them in the comment section below so that I can make sure that I look into them and see if they're a video to bring to you. I'll see you in the next one.